How do you beef up or grow your business credit? Well, that's exactly what we're talking about during today's training. We're going to actually talk about tier three vendors. We're going to talk about the third stage of building business credit, the type of vendors that are available for you to be able to get. These are ones that can make a massive difference in giving you credit to buy the stuff that you're, you're using anyways, probably using cash or your own personal credit cards for. But we're going to help you get the corporate credit cards without the personal guarantee, without the personal credit check to access, to be able to get all the stuff you need to be able to grow your business without the personal guarantee. And again, without the personal credit check. So today we're going to decode this. We're going to decode tier three vendors. We're going to look at tier one, two, building up to tier three vendors. And we're going to talk about how you can actually access this, the actual even underwriting requirements that are needed for you to actually come in and be able to get approved. We got a lot to cover. By the end of this, you're going to have kind of a roadmap of building your business credit, and you're going to know exactly what you need to know to jump in and start getting approved for tier three vendors. So, Let's talk about this. Qualifying for tier three vendors, uh, it's a big achievement, right? 65% of small businesses use credit cards for funding, but there are a lot of other options out there that they're using as well because they're not able to access these kind of credit cards without a personal guarantee or credit check. So with half a decade under your belt, uh, your business should be profitable, and but you still could be using personal credit on occasion. And that's really what we want to stop, right? Is that, you know, there's two ways that you can get credit for a business. You can use your personal credit to qualify, which means that your approval amounts, approval versus denial, the terms you get are all based on your personal credit quality, or you can get approved for business credit cards. And real business or corporate credit cards can be done without any of this, without the personal guarantee, without the personal credit check, uh, completely separate from you personally. And that's exactly what we're going to be talking about building today. Now, starting to build business credit, one of the first steps starts here with tier one and tier two vendors. And these are vendors that usually help you get initial accounts on your business credit report. So I describe it this, th that you need three things. In order to build a business credit profile and then start scaling it or getting more credit using that profile, there's three things you need. One, you got to have accounts that report to the business credit reporting agencies. Okay, these are called trade lines. So if I go get an account here, as you can see on the screen with Granger, who sells outdoor supplies, if I get an account with Granger, then and I use that account, pay my bill, they report to Dun and Bradstreet. That counts as what's called a payment experience or a trade line on my business credit report. So the very first thing you got to do is you got to get these trade lines. You got to get accounts that report to the business credit reporting agencies. Now, the second thing you got to do is that will then give you a credit profile and then that will give you a credit score. So really building business credit is about those three things. We got to get accounts that report. That gives us a credit profile. That gives us a credit score. With the established credit profile and score as the foundation, then we can move on to other tiers. So what are tiers? Well, a tier is kind of how we have learned of helping 50,000 plus people through this process just to break down the step-by-step -step process of building business credit. It's what we found simplifies this process. And here I'll show you exactly what I mean. I'll pull back the curtain and kind of show you how our clients actually use tiers to expedite business credit building. So since we started breaking credit down into tiers, we've literally taken a process that takes businesses three years to accomplish and condensed it to only six months. So how do you do that? Well, how you can get something years off the process like that really comes down to being able to actually tier the account that you're applying for. And so here's what I mean by tiers. If you look at our business finance suite and our business credit builder, this is the system that our clients use to build business credit. You can see here that we've got tier one, tier two, tier three, two vent, tier four. And what that means is that you can't get tier two vendors until you've actually got enough tier one vendors on your business credit reports. So you can see here that you've got to have a certain amount of accounts to be able to qualify for these. Now, if you don't, then you're not able to come in and get approved. The same with tier three, the same with tier four. So by tiering the credit, it's just simply saying, hey, look, you know, at this point, you have six trade lines on your business credit reports. Now, because you have those six, these sources will start to approve you. So the way that tier three works is that you're not going to be able to get credit with these sources until you already have accounts that are reporting in tier one and tier two. So we've got to start with places like Uline, Quill, Granger that we see right here. These are what are called tier one. These are the ones that will give you credit when you have none. You have an empty business credit report. Nothing's on there. You don't want to supply a credit check. You don't want to supply a personal guarantee. 
Maybe you're just getting business off the ground. Maybe you don't have revenue. Maybe your credit's bad. Any number of different reasons, right? So now we come in and we get accounts with Uline, Quill, Granger, Tier 1 vendors. And these vendors are unique because they'll give us credit when we have none on our reports. But they also report the credit they give us to the business credit reporting agencies. They will give us those trade lines. The trade lines will give us the credit profile. The credit profile will give us a credit score. And then based on that credit profile and score, we then come in and we're using that to get tier three, tier four, et cetera, et cetera. Tier two, tier three, tier four. So the idea here is to use tier one bidders, Uline, Quill, Grain, or Uline, Granger, for example. They report, they give us trade lines, it gives us a credit profile, gives us a credit score. That helps open up the door to more tiers of credit here in tier two. Then we get credit with them. We start using them. Now we start getting into revolving accounts with a lot of these different sources. Okay, Meyer, Office Depot, Home Depot, et cetera. So now we're able to come in and start getting a proof of these kind of credit sources. Then as they report more on our business credit reports, that gives us more payment experiences, more trade lines. Then we can start moving on to the other tiers like tier three. So this is how business credit building in its fundamental state works is that we're going through these tiers. Every tier we get, the credit issuers will approve us. They report to the business credit reports. More trade lines hit the credit reports. And then the more of tiers open up, meaning the more creditors will then give us credit. So, and uh, Shande, thanks for coming in for Columbia, South Carolina. I always like it when everybody says hi. So good morning, Rochelle. Um, how many accounts are required? So we're exactly going to talk about that right now to get to tier three. But to get to tier one, zero. You don't need any accounts to get to tier one. To get to tier two, you really should have five payment experiences or three accounts reporting to get to tier two. Now, what do I mean by that? What I mean by that is a payment experience is the reporting of an account to a reporting agency. So if I come, for example, come here in the business finance suite, and let's say that I'm looking at Home Depot here. These, these, these lines aren't even here because we just redid our system. So we've got a few adjustments we're making. But let's say here that we look at Home Depot, okay, and we see that they report to Equifax, DMB, and Experian. This is three payment experiences. So I can get an account with Home Depot and Home Depot alone and move to the next tier because you get three payment experiences. So we need to have three accounts or five payment experiences to move on to tier two vendors. And tier two vendors, we start looking at Quill, we start Meyer, Office Depot. Now, you might not even realize Home Depot is a vendor, but a vendor is somebody that basically will issue you credit to buy products and services in their location. Home Depot, uh, Sam's Club, Costco, all retailers are basically vendors, right? Now we've got starter vendors. Those are Uline and those are Granger. Those are tier one, the ones that'll give us credit when we have none and report it. But then we also have all the other vendors that are retailers, right? Sam's Club, Costco, Home Depot, Lowe's, Sam's Club, our Apple, uh, Dell, uh, HP, and you know, almost every major retailer you can mention offers this kind of business credit without a personal guarantee or credit check. And when we have a handful of accounts, we can move to tier two here, which is Home Depot, for example, which is several of the other accounts I just showed you. Now, you got to keep building business credit because this is the key. You see, a lot of people out there may tell you that business credit building is based on your time in your business or your revenue. You got to have a million in revenue. You got to have three years time in business. It's just not true. What we found in helping over 50,000 people through this process is that it actually comes down to the number of accounts you have on your business credit reports. As long as you have the right number of accounts on your business credit reports, for example, five payment experiences, then you can move to tier two. These other things that people factor in aren't factored in at all. It really comes down to how many accounts you have reporting on your business credit reports. Now, tier three vendors, okay, um, some of them require a longer time in business if you don't have your fundability strong. So you've got to make sure that you build your fundability. Now, I'm not here to talk to you about fundability today. That's a whole other training. And if you go to YouTube and just search fundability, you'll find my training on fundability. It's things like setting up your business the right way, having an EIN, having a business address, having a business phone number and a website, an email address and licensing and a business bank account for bank references. A lot of that we covered in yesterday's training. So you got to get fundability right before you even get into tier one. 
Then you start applying for the U line, the Granger that we just talked about. Then you start getting into tier two. And I showed you what a lot of the tier two vendors look like, right? So now we're able to come in and start getting the Home Depots of the world and the Office Depot and the Staples and the Lowe's and, and a lot of these major retailers. Now we're starting to able to get this without a personal guarantee and credit check. Now, tier three vendors, you need to have at least six accounts on your business credit reports before you even get to the step. So instead of having three accounts or pay five payment experiences, you should have six accounts on your business credit reports. At this point, you've got Uline, you've got Granger, you've got uh, uh, Supply Works, you've got Home Depot, you've got Lowe's, you've got uh, Staples, right? I'm just randomly named six. Now I check my business credit reports. I see all six reporting. That's when we can start to get to these accounts. Now, it says here you might want to purchase $50 or more. Well, that's a general guide if you don't have access to like if you're not working with us. Working with us, our accounts tell you how much you need to spend with each source for it to get reported. So if there's a minimum you've got to spend on Home Depot here, we'll tell you in the exact qualify section if you need to spend a certain amount of money or not. And this one you don't need to. So you wouldn't need to spend at least 50 bucks for Home Depot. But other sources like Uline, Quill, you do. They need you to spend 50 bucks or they won't report the account to the reporting agencies. And that's a problem because my goal for you isn't to just build business credit, it's to do it fast. And we can only build business credit fast if we avoid the pitfalls that slow it down. But one of the pitfalls that slows it down is you go get Quill, you spend $30, you wait a month and they don't report, you wait a month and a half, they don't report, you call them and they say, you got to spend 50. And you say, oh my gosh, I just wasted a month and a half or two months worth of time. So a general rule is spend $50 or more. Now, again, not to self-promote, but if you're working directly with our team, our tech, our, our actual coaches, they tell you spend 50 here. Don't, you don't need to, there's no minimum buying requirements with these sources. There is with others. But if you're not working with us, then it's just safe to just say you should spend 50 bucks or more with each source. It takes about 30 to 90 days for the account to report. Now, again, what will happen is that Every source is different. Again, we tell our clients within our business finance suite when things report. Some report monthly, some report quarterly. So it's not usually in between. Home Depot reports monthly, right? A quill of the world reports quarterly. So what happens here is if you get quill as one of your six, you could wait three months for quill to report. Obviously, slows down the process, what we're trying to avoid. So you got to try to work with sources that report monthly, not quarterly, because that's the goal, right? Is we expedite the business credibility process. It's how we take three years of business credit building, condense it to only six months, is that we get our clients only accounts they can get approved for. We tier it out tier by tier, like I'm doing for you today. So they only apply for tier one, then those report, then they get tier two, then those report tier three. That way they're only applying for accounts they know they can get. And they're getting accounts that have multiple payment experiences that report to multiple reporting agencies to help that happen faster, right? And then on top of that, they're getting accounts that report monthly, not quarterly, because quarterly slows down the process. I just gave you about a handful of the tips of what we use to help our clients condense three years under only six months. And these are things that you could duplicate as well, okay? So you've got to have at least three of these vendors reporting for a total of nine. Basically, you've got to have six accounts. you got to have six different accounts on your business credit reports. So again, you can't skip through tiers here. This is what people try to do. People try to come in and get what I'm going to show you today, our tier three vendors, too early in the process. And the problem there is, is that they don't get approved. They don't have enough accounts on the business credit reports. Crown office supplies, perfect example. Crown office supplies used to be a starter vendor for us. That's what we used them for. But the problem is, is that um, they needed accounts to get reported to them before they would really approve somebody. So we moved them to tier three because if you don't have six accounts in your business credit reports, you're going to have a really hard time getting Crown without a personal guarantee or credit check. Now, the nice thing is, is they report to all three reporting agencies. So you get three payment experiences with them. And they're going to want you to have an entity in good standing, an EIN. Your address needs to match everywhere. You need to have a DUNS number, a business license, um, if your industry or your county requires one. And they have like a $99 man or a membership fee that 
that you pay annually that they report to the business credit reporting agencies. So again, you pay them a fee initially to get started and they report to the business credit reporting agencies. They used to be a great starter account until their criteria for approval got significantly harder. Now, I also want to point something out here is that if you already followed my fundability training, you already have these things. You have an entity in good standing. You have an EIN. You have an address that matches everywhere. You have a DUNS number, a bank account, a business license. I talked about a lot of the stuff in yesterday's training. So when I teach fundability, it's crucial that it's a first step because if you just do that one time, just go through my fundability training and just do it once, then you'll see that all these underwriting criteria for all these sources, it's, it's just fundability. Like if you just follow my fundability training, you've already got all the stuff done anyway. You're already <laughs> good to go at that point. So, and Philly's in the house, North Carolina's house. Everybody's saying hi. I appreciate everybody coming in and saying hi today. And uh, Ban, what's up from Philly? And Theodore, what's up from New York City? I was just up there in th for Thanksgiving for the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. So if you're getting value, hit the like button here and subscribe while you're at it. And also, tell me where you're from. I always like to give you a shout out and say hello. Okay, so again, Crown Office Supplies sells a lot more than Office Supplies. A lot of stuff you can use to grow your business. Another one of these is Gimports. Now, they report to Dun & Bradstreet. They sell like pest management products, tires, footwear, outdoor workwear, supplies. Uh, initial order of 50 bucks is required for them. Uh, what I'm saying here when it says select the invoice me option when you check out, it's almost always the same. No matter which one of these vendors you're going with, there's always an option when you go to check out. You put stuff in your cart, you go to check out. And they offer you an option like invoice me. It's always worded a little different with Gimplers it directly is invoice me. And if you choose that, then you're applying for credit. They don't make a big deal about it. They just, you just say, Hey, I don't, I don't want to pay now. I want to be invoiced. And then if you get approved and they ship the items, well then if they ship the items, that means you got approved. So with Gimplers, um, they have a ton of stuff that can actually help you along the way. And again, great accounts start building business credit. A lot of people use them as a starter vendor. But again, they're no longer a starter vendor because they require those handful or six basically accounts before they'll approve you. Another one here is Suma Office Supplies. Now they offer net 30 terms up to a $2,000 limit. You got to purchase 80 bucks with them. And they also offer a lot of stuff, including down downloadable products, very similar fundability requirements here, entity in good standing, EIN, business address that matches everywhere, DUNS number, business license, business bank account is what it takes to actually get approved. If you did all the stuff in fundability step, it's already done. You're already ready to apply. Okay. Now, that being said, we don't just stop there. Keep in mind that in tier three, there's a lot of really, really, really good sources. Too many to even mention here. Some you might not have heard about, Get Go, Maverick, a lot that you already have. Meyer Grocery Store, Luke Oil, Office Depot, for example, Home Depot, Exxon Mobil. Okay, uh, Valino Fleet, a lot of fleet cards start to become available here. Lowe's, home, App Staples. So if you work in a place where you need a lot of office supplies, this is a great step for you. Office Depot Staples is here. If you need a lot of uh, construction materials, outdoor stuff, great place for you too. Home Depot's here. Lowe's is in this step. Amazon is in this step as well. Okay, Northern Tools, 7-Eleven. So as you can see, just a ton of really valuable sources we can use here to build business credit in this step. Now, I don't have time to go through all of these, but keep in mind, if you like the step-by-step -step of exactly what it takes to get approved, this is exactly what you see if you're working with us, like at our business finance suite. So this actually says, whether it's recommended or not, do you have enough trade lines to apply? In this case, you don't, don't even bother. When you do have the six accounts, this lights up and says you're good to go. Okay, it also will come in and tell you the terms that are offered. You can get a revolving account or net 30 here, which means you have 30 days to pay it back or revolving. And you can also see you're getting three payment experiences here as well. You can also see here that Home D or Staples reports after 60 days, then they report monthly. So the very first time you have an account with them, they don't report for 60 days. Then after that, they report monthly. So really good information to have if you're just starting to build your business credit. And then we can see here, depending on which one of these you want, net 30 or revolving, you can actually see the exact underwriting requirements for each source. So you'll know exactly what you need to do. Now, here's what's interesting. It might look like a lot, but keep in mind, our clients at this point have already went through the fundability step. They already have the entity. They have the EIN. They have their address that matches everywhere, their DUNS number, their license, their bank account, their phone number set up. All these things are there. And again, remember that if you don't have the three years in business, you don't need it. You can get past that with a good Experian or DMV credit score already. Meaning 
that if you apply for Staples too early, Staples is going to want you to have a time and business requirement. But if you apply for Staples after you've already got tier one and tier two and you've built the experience in Paydex, then you don't necessarily have to have the revenue or, or time and business requirements. And again, that's what's interesting about building business credit is you can get around those time and business and revenue requirements if you've built your fundability the wrong, right way. So you also want to consider non-reporting accounts. Now, we call these advanced vendors because advanced vendors don't report to a reporting agency. And you're going to hear me talk about them a lot in 2022 and beyond. I never talked about them before because they don't build business credit. And I like to talk a lot about building business credit. And this, these vendors don't actually build business credit, but huge amounts of value here. So look at these accounts that you can get approved for based on having established business credit. You establish the business credit profile and score. These credit sources will approve you. Even though they don't report, still a lot of benefit. If you're in the flooring business, being able to get all your supplies now on credit is a huge value, even if they don't report, right? But look at these United Airlines, for example, Chase. Okay, we see a lot of banks in this step of, that will give you credit based on business credit, but don't report. O'Reilly Auto Parts is here in this step as well. So John Deere, People Ready, Navy Federal Credit Union, Best Buy, Wells Fargo, Newegg, but Apple. Okay, so what we're starting to see here is there's a lot of these advanced vendors that don't report to a reporting agency, but that will still start to give you credit and they can work as a trade reference. When you send in an application for somebody, even though they're not in your business credit reports, you can use them as a trade reference. So don't neglect these. Don't forget about these. These advanced vendors could be something that give you trade references that could really help you build your business credit. Okay, and per DMB, a trade reference is a source that supplies past payment experiences between a business and a vendor, some trade references <clears throat> automatically provide payment information on all their experiences in the form of trade tape. Other trade references are submitted manually to DMB. So what they're saying here is that, hey, look, trade references are people that have a relationship between a vendor and somebody that's actually using them. And sometimes they actually come through a system they call trade tape to automatically report. Other times they're manually added. Other times they don't report to a reporting agency. But keep in mind those advanced vendors like Apple uh, could definitely provide a lot of value because they provide you trade references. You're able to come in on a credit application. You're able to say, hey, uh, you know, I have these trade references on my business or are these trade references to give you, even though they don't report on my business credit reports, it still provides you a ton of value with being able to have other credit issuers, lenders see that you, these sources have given you credit. Okay. So a lot of information here. Now, um, why are they important? As I mentioned, because again, just because they don't report, they still provide value because it tells other credit issuers and lenders you have these relationships. Unfortunately, 97% of trade vendors don't report the credit they give you. And I deal with this all the time. People say, hey, I've got business credit established. I just talked to a guy yesterday, just a perfect example. And he and I said, hey, okay, you know, if you're going to get an SBA loan, you've got to have established business credit. He goes, don't worry about it. I've got that. I've got established business credit. Um, I have a credit card right now that we use for the business all the time. Dot, dot. I said, okay, great. Let's pull your business credit reports. We pulled his business credit reports. They were zero. They were empty. He said, I don't understand how this can happen. And I said, let me ask you a question. The business credit cards you have, where do they report? And he said, I don't know. Very common for business owners, right? I have a business credit card. I think the business credit report card reports to the business credit reporting agencies, but it doesn't. 97% of them don't. Then you're using this credit card and buying all the stuff for the business and you think you're getting all this credit history when you're getting none because that's not even reported to the business credit reporting agency. Now, that can still provide value in the form of a trade reference, but again, it's not actively helping build your business credit reports. So yeah, these accounts that don't report could be trade references, but again, um, you also need to keep in mind that you know it's it provides you even more value if you get accounts that do report because in that case everybody can see it lenders and credit issuers can see that um, whereas trade references they can't unless you put them as a trade reference on the application so starting with vendor accounts to build business credit's a powerful strategy right it's a proven way to build business credit by following through these tiers and tier three is not it's basically 
not just a means to an end. There's a lot of good credit that you're able to get in this step that can actually help you grow your business. So remember, when we're building business credit, we're building it based on tiers. And tiers are just based on how many accounts we have reporting but in order to get approved for those sources. So if I have six accounts, I can get to tier three, six accounts on my business credit reports. Now I can start to get to DMB. Now I can start to get to Equifax. Now I can start to get to Experian. Now I can start to get to a lot of those sources that will actually approve me. And Greg says, hey, good morning, Greg from Houston. Thanks for coming in, Greg from Houston. Good morning. Thanks for coming in. Rarso from Philly. I appreciate you coming in. Okay, New Jersey in the house got approved for an unlimited Amex with $5,000 pay over time. Thanks for all your videos. Awesome. So you can see here, guys, from Strictly Clean Pressure Washing, which I love that name, um, what happens when you follow the system here. So I'm not asking for testimonials. You can see impromptu case studies here right on your screen of people that are following these steps and actually having um, the success. And hey, just signed up with the Ultimate Program. Very happy to help business owners to start to scale their business. So this is awesome. So Theodore signed up with our partner program is actually offering business credit financing as a service. Hey, Theodore, welcome to the family, man. Glad to have you. And Maritha says, well, what was the name of the website where I can find this information? Um, again, I'm not sure if I gave you exact website, but you can go to youtube.com forward slash credit suite. And all of our training is right there on fundability, tier one, tier two, tier three, every step of the process we break down. Some of my longer ones, 60, 90 minutes. If you find one of those, like I just did building business credit in 2022 last month. If you get that one, that'll map out 90 minutes, the entire process of building business credit. So youtube.com forward slash credit suite will give you access uh, to a lot of that information. Okay. And again, um, if you're interested in learning more, here's a YouTube video that kind of, you could take a screenshot of this, turn that into YouTube, and that'll walk you through the entire process of how we help clients build business credit. So now next time we're going to talk about 20,000 plus in lending options for companies with three years time in business and how to qualify. Okay. So if you want more information, we'll talk about that. And don't forget, if we can ever help you get money, give us a call. That's what we do. Okay. Our goal is to make it where you could just send one email, one phone call, and have somebody help you through every stage of funding your business from the very beginning startup phase all the way to where you're looking at multi-million dollar expansion. I was talking to somebody yesterday about a $5 million SBA loan. So we help from everything from startup in between. If you got value from this, give us a call. If you give us a call, three really powerful things happen on that call. One, if you have established business credit, we get your business credit reports for you for free. We're the only place in the world you're going to find that will get you actual DMB Equifax Experian credit reports at no cost to you. We get them for you for free. We review them. We give you tips and tactics to be able to improve them. We do a fundability check. We tell you what's wrong with fundability and what to fix to help you get through these tiers successfully and quickly. And then we also do a funding assessment. We just tell you all the money you can get right now. And that happens just by giving us a call at 877-600-2487, or you can schedule online at creditsuite.com forward slash console. If you got value from this, make sure that you like and subscribe on the channel you're watching. We have daily tips on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, uh, one minute tips on TikTok and Insta stories. We also have a podcast you can listen to on the go. I got to tell you, my, I love the podcast. Uh, I love it because I swear to you what happened to me today. I had this guy on my podcast introduce me to something I'd never even seen before of basically renting digital real estate. Basically, what he's doing is building websites for niches that need leads, generating leads, and then renting those websites to the companies that eat them. It's brilliant. And I mean, this guy is something I'm looking into today on going down this road. It creates a whole other income stream for me just because I heard this guy on my podcast. We've got over 600 episodes on our podcast with these kind of really smart people that teach every aspect of running your business. So you can access that to the Business Credit Financing Show at the top right of our website with all of our other social links at creditsuite.com. And we've got a busy diva here, Ashila. That's much easier uh, from Manvel, Texas. BZD Notary Services. Love it. I love that. And working on it. Got one net 30. Congratulations. Keep working on that as well. And Dwayne, thanks for coming in. Excellent info. I'm from New Jersey. That's awesome. Man. Thanks for tuning in. A lot of New York and New Jersey people here today. I love that. I spend a lot of time up in that area. So thanks everybody for tuning in. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap up. Here's our podcast. Our team, Keith here, put this on here. If you're interested in learning more about our podcast, don't forget to like and subscribe. And we will be back tomorrow to talk about how to get money to fund your business. We're talking about actual business funding options. Don't forget to give us a call for your free consult as well so we can help you get business credit financing to grow your business 
Thanks for tuning in. This is available for replay on the platform you're watching on right now. Look forward to seeing you on our next training. And Golden says, what's the best thir- net or best 30 vendors you request for beginners? Uh, we talked about some of those middle of this presentation. I really like right now, I like Uline, I like Granger, and I like SupplyWorks. Uh, and, and Home Depot Pro. There's four of them right there. Home Depot Pro is a really good one right now as well. There's another fifth one out there called CEO Creative. I like that one as well. And if you want even more, I've got them on YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash credit suite. Go to the Building Business Credit 2022 webinar I did last month. That maps out every single aspect of the process, the vendors, the fundability, goes you through the tiers. It's a step-by-step process through it all. Uh, again, go. it's Business Credit Building 2022. You can find it at youtube.com forward slash credit suite. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. Have a great day. I look forward to seeing you on our next training where we talk about more cool ways to get money to start and grow.